everybody, Not Nuts here again with a new video. Uh, this time there's not going to be any tutorial, it's just going to be uh, information about paracord. I'm going to start doing a video series called like something like the elements of uh, working with paracord or elements of rope work, something like that, where there's actually no knot work or anything like that, but just talk about the methods and techniques and tips and stuff like that, information about knot work that will help you become a better informed and hopefully a better knot worker. So today's lesson is uh, about paracord. What is paracord? So let's find out a little bit something about uh, paracord that you may not already know. I've worked with, done knot work for many, many years as a lot of you may or may not know and I've worked with natural fibers and artificial fiber type ropes, three strand ropes, cords, um, and uh, natural fibers like jute and hemp and paracord and I like paracord best out of all those mediums and um, if you uh, give it a chance you you might too so let's, what is paracord so parachute cord or paracord or 550 cord are all the same names for the same kind of thing what it is it's a nylon kermantle type of rope originally used uh, for suspension lines and parachutes during World War II. And so what a kermantle is, is uh, it's uh, a woven or braided sheath that surrounds an inner core uh, and the inner core is usually made up of uh, other cords or yarn uh, or uh, other ropes which actually do all the load bearing work. The outer sheath is really used just to protect the uh, inner cores. So, um, the US man military does uh, several grades of specifications of paracord. There's type 1, type 1A, type 2, type 2A, type 3, and type 4. So, the one that we want to use is the type 3. The type 3 cord is uh, rated to hold a minimum of 550 pounds which is where the 550 and 550 cord comes from. Um, uh, the the uh, other military specifications are that it should be 7 to 9 inner cores on the inside uh, and most of them the almost all paracord that I buy online these days is seven strand and um, that's something you want to look for when you're buying your paracord and the seven strands are actually two strands of yarn twisted together and uh, paracord is made out of nylon and there's some good things and bad things about nylon we'll talk about those here in, in a few minutes um, when you're buying paracord on the civilian market there are several things that you need to look for and be aware of also because you can get bad paracord and I've gotten bad paracord before sometimes I think I've gotten type 2A or 1A which are uh, the military specification uh, those require actually no cords in the middle so it's just a flat outer sheath and so uh, it will help you to get the right thing if you order the right thing online and look for some keywords in the description fields of uh, your cord when you're buying it. So um, while you're buying paracord online or when you're looking for paracord online or you're reading the description of paracord that you're getting ready to use, just because the packaging on the outside says one thing, what you may wind up with is something else. So here's some things to, to be aware of or to, uh, that are warning indicators that you're not getting real 550 uh, type 3 military cord. Um, if there are six or fewer inner strands inside when you cut the core or when you cut the cord in half or whatever. Uh, cores that are constructed of uh, not cords but they're just filled with like a filler, like a fiber and you can just pull it out fluffy like cotton sort of thing. Uh, that's not real 550 cord. Um, include any materials other than nylon. 550 cord, as I said earlier, is all nylon construction. Um, and if there's any visible construction flaws in it, I've ordered paracord online and then got it and it has like snags all down the length of the paracord 
and or it's lumpy inside. The tensioning gizmo didn't work properly when the paracord is being assembled and the cords inside are all bunched up and it makes it lumpy, parts of it lumpy. Uh, another tensioning pro I think it's a tensioning problem in the manufacturing process anyway is a guess of mine is uh, when the outer sheath is too big or the inner cores gets compressed too much and the cord flattens uh, especially when you buy like a thousand foot spool and the inside cores will be flat when you're when you get it down to it um, that's not really I haven't really had any serious problems using that kind of cord but when you're looking for uh, a material to work with that's consistent and you're working with one cord that's flat and one cord that's not it does make a difference in your knot work so um, the nylon construction of paracord makes it fairly elastic. In other words, it will stretch and then it will shrink back up, actually. Um, it will not shrink back up to its original length normally, but it does uh, shrink. Just be aware of that. That can be an advantage or a disadvantage to you when you're doing knot work. It will also shrink when you get it wet. So if you are making jewelry like everybody loves making those uh, um, survival bracelets, uh, if you wash the cord first, like throw it in the wash machine, let it dry out real good, and then work with it, then people will have a product that won't shrink up on them after they, you know, get it wet and sweaty or something like that. So that's something to think about. Um, heat and light uh, are enemies of nylon in general. So if you are got your paracord and it's out in the sun and in a hot environment, it's going to break down uh, quicker than it would if it, if it was not in that kind of an environment. So um, the sun will bleach out, as, as anybody that knows it lives in a real sunny environment, the sun will bleach out colors out of all kinds of materials, and paracord is no exception. So be aware with that. Um, strong detergents and bleach are not recommended because they can also um, stain and degrade the nylon material. So, why? Let's talk about why should we do knotting with paracord as opposed to some other types of cord. Paracord comes in so many different colors these days, tons and tons of colors. It's fairly easy to get paracord. You can get it online. You can buy it in. Uh, Walmart even a lot of times these days and th uh, places of that nature, sporting goods stores and so on. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, just like anything else, you got your low end and your high end of the scale and you usually get what you pay for. Uh, paracord is extremely strong and durable. Uh, it's a fairly uniform um, color and diameter. Uh, oh, and the diameter is normally about 4 millimeters or 5 30 seconds of an inch. There is no military specification for the diameter. That's just usually what it winds up being after the manufacturing process on average. Um, paracord is really easy to work with and it's a very flexible medium. So in other words, you don't have to just work with the paracord as it is. You can take the cords out of the middle and just tie with the the cords that you just pulled out or the outer sheath or whatever so there's a lot of different things you can do with it uh, another positive is paracord is just cool the military and all these other high-tech guys using it so they must be they must be on to it for a reason right uh, and another good reason speaking of the military if you if you're in the military and you're sitting on the trailhead for an hour or the railhead for an hour or wherever down in the motor pool waiting on a something to happen and there's nothing going on for hours and hours there's paracord there somewhere so there's something for you to do while you're waiting so it's a uh, kind of a neat way to kill some time uh, so tips that you can use when you're buying paracord uh, look for in the description of your your cord when you're buying it look for cord that says it's made to mill spec so that's military specifications so if it's 550 cord and it's made to military specifications you'll get good cord uh, in the description field, look for the words 550 cord. Very, very, very important. Look for the words seven strand inner core. Okay? So, seven inner strands. Uh, nylon construction. And do some research online before you're buying. Do a Google search using the name of the business you're wanting to buy from and the word uh, paracord and review. And uh, see what other people have had experience with that business. Uh, use a business that has a policy return, read their policy return, and understand it. 
especially if you're not buying it from Walmart. If you're buying it from Walmart or a sporting goods store in your area, it's a lot easier to take that back than it is to take it online. Best deals are online though, so um, it can be a double-edged sword. Um, buy a small amount of cord from your uh, the person you're buying it from the first time and see if the quality is up to your liking and if it is then it's a pretty safe bet that most of their other inventory is also the same, similar quality. Um, if you're going to make a big order, like if you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars or more, don't feel bad about calling the, uh, the supplier and asking them to send some samples, like maybe just a few inches or a foot of the different colors that you're thinking about buying so that you can see the quality and, uh, and check it out before you buy. So those are just some tips that will hopefully will help you uh, understand Paracord uh, and to make wise purchases online when you're looking for Paracord. So keep those tips in mind everybody and have a happy holiday. You can see I got our my wife's got the Christmas tree rocking behind me and uh, oh there's one other thing always don't forget to subscribe